Hey everybody, how we doing today? So welcome to Chumming 101 number 3, part B, uh, where we take a look to find out how long it takes to dissolve one block of chum uh, in six different types of chum nets. In part A, we basically took chum blocks, put them in each one of the six different mesh size chum nets, and then drop them in the water. Um, I wanted to get a baseline, so I didn't disturb them at all. Basically, every 10 minutes, I would just check on the progress to see how much they basically dissolved, and just let it go on its own without any type of disturbance. Uh, the major takeaway from that was that uh, I, I call it the meat blanket uh, issue. Uh, what that was is that the whole outer layer of the chum block would basically soften, it would dissolve, but there wasn't anything that would allow it to break up and flow away in the current. So it just sat there and insulated that core and it made it take a long time before that block would basically dissolve. Um, it ranged from an hour 50 minutes to an average of about two hours to two hours and 10 minutes. So it took a way longer than I expected. So I took a, a look back at it and then that's where I came up with that meat blanket theory that uh, it was just causing like an insulating layer that just really protected that ice core and it took it a lot longer to basically dissolve. That and then the cheese grater effect uh, when you involve the mesh from the net, if you do any start of what I call the, uh, the, the fisherman shake, okay, and then that the uh, mesh would become like a cheese grater and shred that soft portion, that meat blanket, off of the, uh, the chum block core that's frozen and take off that soft layers and just fluff those off. There go, would go off in the current and then that would allow direct contact between the warmer water and then that solid ice and then allow it to melt faster. Okay, So and also I wanted to do it a second time, uh, which is the B version, where I would actually go out there and do a, a, a the fisherman shake occasionally, more more uh, similar to what a realistic fishing trip would be like. So we basically set it up the same way, uh, with the only difference being is that I did not even set up the quarter inch uh, mesh because. That one, it just didn't flow. I think after two and a half hours, it was still about two thirds to half, still crammed full of uh, fish meat. Uh, it was defrosted, but the pieces are large enough that it just wouldn't fit through the smaller mesh. So it wasn't even worth uh, bringing out and wasting another block. So we did it with the uh, half inch, three quarters, one inch, inch and a quarter, and the one inch by half inch cage. The parameters for part B were very similar to part A. Uh, it was around 4 p.m. Uh, the temperatures were around 83-84 degrees. Water temps were a little bit warmer at 81 degrees. Uh, the tide was running around 1 to 2 knots. Uh, it was incoming versus outgoing, but that really wouldn't make a difference. Uh, using the same Tournament Master Green Label Chum, uh, it's basically a 7 pound frozen block of ground up Menhaden and again using the five different size mesh nets. Like part A, I'm just going to front load the results because uh, watching chum melt is about as exciting as watching a cube of ice melt. But if you're interested in that, you can just continue watching after I give the, the factoids and uh, you can watch my testing going there on the back side. Okay, the results, an hour. There you go. <laughs> No, but really, basically the uh, the inch and a quarter took right around 50 minutes to totally dissolve it. The uh, three quarter, the one inch, and the inch and that by a half inch cage all took right around about an hour. And then the half inch mesh actually never finished. Um, basically, after an hour to about an hour 20 minutes, I just did nothing but shake it. Okay, trying to force as much chum through it as possible. And then after 20 minutes, it just, that, what was in there was probably about 10% of the block just would not fit through the mesh. It was just too big of a pieces. Uh, so that is your basic result there. 
Now the takeaways from our testing, the, the most major one is the, uh, the fisherman shake or that trees, cheese grater effect of the mesh net basically scraping off those defrosted sides that it touches. Um, you were looking at basically putting that chum block in a net and just leaving it in the current unmolested and them lasting an average of two hours versus using the fisherman shake a couple of times in each 10 minute increment and the average time dropping to about an hour, so about half. So it's very important that part of it. Now it doesn't necessarily mean that you have to be always someone there uh, just sitting there shaking it the whole time. But uh, if you're in actual waves where your boat's kind of bouncing, that's going to cause the net to, and the chum blocks to kind of move around and it's going to be that same effect. Uh, also, if you put two blocks of chum in there, you're going to have those two separate entities shifting a bit on, on its own and that's going to cause that same effect. So just any sort of movement that moves that chum block around is going to get that chum flowing a lot more than just plain sitting there. Another factor is the actual chum size. Uh, I actually read the box and <laughs> it said right there uh, they use a 5 8 inch grinder uh, to kind of grind up that fish. So you're looking at a maximum size of 5 8 of an inch. So when we talk uh, about the half inch mesh having problems flowing that chum out and just kind of building up a kind of a pocket of uh, defrosted chum because it can't pass through, that would be why 5 eighths versus half inch, it's bigger than the mesh. Hence, three quarters mesh, one inch, inch by a half inch, inch and a quarter, had no problems with it. As soon as that chum came off of the block, it was flowing out in the current. Um, the mesh caused no resistance. Another takeaway, the half inch mesh is just not going to be functional for effective reef chumming. Uh, 5 eighths size chum, half inch size mesh. All you're going to do is collect that chum in there and you're going to have an inconsistent flow. Uh, remember, the key part that you always want to remember is you are looking to do is the flow enough chum that you're attracting the fish, okay, keeping their attention but not overfeeding them. Now this will work in the beginning, okay, when it's flowing a lot of oils, the blood, the smaller bits, it's got a real constant flow. But what happens though is those bigger chunks start getting, filling up and clogging up and getting stuck there and then you have inconsistent flows. So you're going to attract those fish and then your flow is going to become intermittent and then they're going to just kind of lose their attention and just kind of swim away and then that's that inconsistency that we want to stay away from. Once you attract them, you got to hold their attention and uh, this is just not going to do it. That's why I developed the three quarters inch mesh because five eighths is smaller than three quarters. Another takeaway was that there was not such a difference between the inch and a quarter chum net versus down to the three quarters inch. Um, it has to do with, again, we're talking about as long as the larger than a five eighths, the chum is going to flow through no problem, okay? But the bigger factor is, is that uh, a, a block of frozen chum is going to melt no differently in the inch and a quarter net versus the three quarters. It's just going to melt at the same rate. Um, that way, when we're doing the shake at the same time, the same amount of chum is going to come off of either one of them. And the only difference would be is a really large chunk comes off it might flow easier through the larger mesh than the smaller one, but it's not going to be that much of a factor. Hence, uh, 50 minutes versus one hour. All right, there you go. That's how long it takes to flow one block of frozen chum through six different chum style nets. Uh, hopefully you found that uh, helpful or useful in some way. But I will be doing this test once again in the mid summertime when we get our full on heat. Um, during the winter spring season, our water temps run roughly around mid 60s to mid 70s, 80 degrees. Uh, but during that mid summertime, the water temps get up to mid to high 80s to even in the 90s. So I think if you add that high temps plus current, I think it'll dissolve those chum blocks really quickly. I think. You never know until you test it. <laughs> but uh, otherwise, 
Uh, it's, it's been nice that I have a company that sells all these different chum nets, uh, www.allaboutthebait.com, uh, which allowed me to basically go out and test these. I don't think I've ever seen information out there in regards to flow rates on different size meshes. So uh, hopefully that is helpful to a lot of people. Uh, but otherwise, uh, thanks for watching, and I will see you on the next video. And uh, for those chum watching people that like to watch chum dissolve, keep on watching. And uh, I've got that feature there, and you can see the whole system. Unfortunately, Scary Jerry didn't show up, but uh, hey, what can you do? So anyways, thanks for watching, and I will see you next video. Bye. Hey everybody, how we doing today? So welcome to Chumming 101, number three, B. <laughs> All right. uh, the part A was basically finding out how long a block of chum will last in uh, multiple different mesh size nets. Uh, however, one of the things that I found was, wow, something's going crazy there. I didn't even start chumming yet, boys. Uh, but was that with just the chum in a net in just current without any other disturbances uh, It would basically just create a insulating meat blanket around the block and and it would last a long time uh, However, I wanted to do it again, but in a little bit more realistic conditions uh, Using the fisherman shake which is just basically shaking it and what that's going to do is to have that net act like that cheese grater and basically slough off any of the defrosted parts right away instead of letting it basically just form that blanket. So I think it'll actually reduce those blocks a lot faster, disperse a lot more chum, and give us a better indication of what it is in real life, how long a block of chum will last. So anyways, let's get to it. Uh, temperatures today, we're running right around 82 degrees. Uh, the last test I did was 79, so a little bit warmer. Uh, winds are coming out of the south-southeast, uh, 10 to 15 knots, and uh, we're pushing about that same uh, two knots, basically, uh, going towards the uh, Gulf side direction. The mesh sizes we're going to be testing today are the half inch, three quarter, one inch, the one inch by half inch cage, and the one inch, one and a quarter inch. Um, I'm not even gonna try testing the uh, quarter inch. Uh, basically, last testing, it took two and a half hours and it probably only flowed about a quarter of the block of chum, even after it was fully defrosted and loosened. So it's just really negligible to, it would take forever to kind of shake that out since the whole size of the mesh is way smaller than those little chunks that are coming off the block. So we're just going to stick with these five and uh, see what happens. The chum we're going to be using is the Tournament Master brand chum. Uh, this is the green label version. It's uh, seven pounds of ground up Menhaden. Uh, it shows a five eighths inch grind size. So that's basically what we're going to be using for our test. Okay, we've got all our bags loaded up. Uh, time to hit the timer and drop them in the water. Okay, it's 4.12 p.m. to do the stopwatch. All right, let's drop them in and uh, get to some melting. All right, so here's our layout. We've got the half inch mesh. We've got three quarters inch mesh. We've got one inch mesh. Down below is the one inch by half inch uh, chum cage and the inch and a quarter commercial chum net. So that's where they're at. Chum seems to be flowing that kind of direction, which is good. And then, uh, yeah, so I'll be shaking my, my chum bags here. All right, so we're 10 minutes in. I haven't really shaken these yet. Um, usually when you go to a place, you anchor up, put the chum bags up, start getting your rods rigged, getting all the bait and everything situated. And then you're waiting for that block to kind of just start melting and you're really not in that much of a hurry. But after 10 minutes, you can kind of take a look here. You can see how much has already melted off of there, but yet it didn't come off because there was nothing kind of rubbing against it. And that's why the shaking part is gonna be so important. Look how much chum comes off of that. Just a few shakes like that. So you're gonna see how much more is really gonna be reduced just by doing the shaking. So I'm gonna give each one of these a few shakes. And then uh, 
I'm not gonna do it every 10 minutes, maybe every five minutes or roughly. Look how much that's coming off of there. And that's kind of that cheese grating that I'm talking about. It's taking off all that defrosted stuff. Look at that cloud. And then you can see it knocked off most of the soft stuff. But yeah, this is gonna go a lot faster. But you can kind of see the, uh, the chum uh, cloud that it created here. A lot more flow. All right, we're 20 minutes in. I've given it a couple of shakes on all of these, but it's still flowing good. They are definitely shrinking. Each one of these guys here. Oh, don't let the cage come off. Yeah, this cage is uh, really shaving it down. The big boy. Here's the three quarter. And our little half inch. All right, we've got a nice chum cloud. That looks like the tide is starting to switch because my chum is going that direction. So, uh, got a nice cloud here going. All right, we're 30 minutes in. Things are progressing nicely. The shake does make quite a bit of difference. These things are getting real small. Um, one of the things I'm finding out is that the larger mesh doesn't really change things so much. It's still the uh, core block has to melt in order for stuff to slough off. So the bigger net isn't going to melt really any faster but they're all fairly close what it does do is that bigger chunks seem to come off of it but like you can see bigger chunks of uh chum there it is smaller than my other ones but not by much this is still a frozen core so you can't really do much beyond that but we're 30 minutes in all right 40 minutes in let's take a look Well, uh, this is the one inch. Not much left. It's getting down. Pretty much the same with the uh, cage. But those are the basically the frozen block still. But it's fluffing off the, uh, the melted stuff very good. It's not uh, blocking it. So it's flowing nicely. And of course this guy. This is the uh, inch and a quarter. And that's just solid ice there. The three or three quarters, pretty much the same thing. Plus no buildup. It's flowing right through the chum bag without a problem. And this, the half inch is still got the most, but a lot of that is because those are chunks that can't flow through the net. But that's 40 minutes, not much left on some of these. All right, so we are right at 50 minutes. And we're getting down to the end of it. The white one here, this bag, it's still, still got quite a bit left. I'd say probably maybe half the half the uh, brick there. And it's still got a solid chunk in there. A lot of that has to do with that, uh, these are larger pieces that can't get through that mesh. So that's their kind of limitation. The three quarter inch, yeah, it's just got a, about a dollar bill size uh, frozen piece there. Still cold, still frozen. See, it's not, not that much. It's fluffing off, but there's really not much that'll come off there. Got the one inch. Still flowing chunks. I shake it. Pretty much that same st size uh, frozen piece there. the cage inch by half inch still flowing still staying clean has that uh, 
hamburger size there. It's probably a, a third pounder hamburger size. But that's just a solid piece there. And then this is our inch and a quarter. It's got a little bit less, but that's probably a quarter pounder. But yeah, it's got, it's breaking through there. So that's a few more minutes left on that. So yeah, we're getting down right to the end of it for the three quarters and up at least. All right, we are one hour and uh, the inch and a quarter finished about five minutes ago. So about 55 minutes. Um, these, all these guys are pretty much down to the, maybe a meatball left. So they're pretty much done. Call it an hour. Yeah, this is, there's nothing left in this guy. That's the cage. Three quarters. That's got a little scrap there. So that's done. So all the other ones finished up pretty much. And then uh, the half inch. There's still like a, a dollar bill size frozen chunk in there. And then, like I said, it's got that insulation of all this loose meat that won't fit. So that will still have to quite a bit of time, but an hour pretty much wraps up the three quarter inch, inch and a, and a half inch, and then the inch and a quarter there. So uh, they all pretty much uh, melted away about the same pace because there wasn't any hole size that was an obstruction. So very interesting. All right, we're hour and 10 minutes in. The only thing I've got left is the uh, half inch bag. Been shaking it pretty consistently. There is one, well, two chunks there, probably a quarter pounder combined. The rest is just uh, stuff that can't fit through the bag. I've been shaking it pretty hard, trying to force as much as I can through there. It'll look like it'll go another 10 minutes here so we'll keep at it until we try to cycle this whole bag or as much will fit all right just cycled one hour and 20 minutes uh only thing i've got is the uh, half inch bag and i've been shaking it continuously pretty much for the last 20 minutes uh there is no more ice parts left this is just loose pieces and it's really i mean i've non-stop been shaking it and really what's in there is just the pieces that are larger than that half inch mesh a lot of skin bones um not really the good chunks take a look there so these are all larger pieces of skin bones i mean they, they just are not going to fit through this mesh and that's what you have left there uh like the box says the grind on it is about five eighths of an inch so these are half inch so there's going to be some that uh just are not going to fit so we got through quite a bit i'm actually surprised i got through that much but i non-stop shook it for the last 20 minutes which normally i don't think anybody would be doing but uh yeah that got rid of most of it so that's kind of our testing there